let us instead move to a slightly more sophisticated mechanism of representation. In this representation, we have described sequences of events as existing in patterns where each event is definable either as A, B, C, D, or an exception. Note that within the rules of this method of representation, an exception could be E, it could be F, it could be something completely unrelated to our other mechanisms of representation. It is simply an exception. In observing our ordered rows, we see that each of them has a clear and discernible pattern. We have alternating properties. We have sequential property, properties. We have alternating and sequential properties. We have later sequential alternation. We have sequential reversal. And that in each of these, we have found an exception occurred, an event which did not fit the pattern and did not fit our mechanism of representation. Note that by virtue of our system of representation, we have created the possibility for observing non-linear patterns, that being patterns within the patterns themselves. One potential problem of this mechanism of representation is that we have created an entire column of exceptions. As earlier noted, an exception is simply that, and one exception does not necessarily correlate to the other. However, within this mechanism of representation, it does appear that we have a second order pattern between our exceptions. And so long as we define exception exclusively as exception, without necessarily qualifying that an exception does not necessarily correlate to any other, we could easily make the mistake of drawing the conclusion that our exceptions themselves represent a pattern. Worse still, if we consider our exceptions as in some way correlated to each other, our exceptions as representing a second pattern, a different pattern, a different order of pattern, then we may seek to correlate that imagined or imposed different ordered pattern with our existing patterns, those patterns which we have defined. It is at this point in the process that we must consider some of the necessary implications of what it means to be an exception. First, we must consider that our exceptions may not be correlatable, that we cannot liken one exception to another, except in their exceptionality to the patterns in which they occurred. Second, we must come to a problem or come to recognize the inherent problem of representation of exception, that so too as the exception is an exception to the pattern in which it occurred and from which we consider it an exception, we must also consider that the exception may well be an exception to our method of representation, that as it is an exception, an aberrance, or a representation of a failure of a given pattern, so too might it also be a representative or representational problem, that as it indicates that our patterns have gaps, so too might it represent that our representation has gaps. As we seek to define patterns, as we seek to use patterns as a mechanism of understanding both ourselves, our environment, and also the relationship between the two, we must take great care when considering exception and in so doing allow it to remain as an exception, to imply some meta-pattern which includes all exceptions.
or to emphasize the exception as some sort of supersedent pattern, as if the pattern with which we would connect exceptions would have authority over or be of greater importance than our other lesser patterns. What we are truly gaining insight into is not that which we are considering, is not the world in which we live, is not even the structure of ourselves, of our consciousness. Rather, we are gaining an understanding of the mechanisms with which we primarily engage with these questions. Gaining an appreciation for the mechanisms of our understanding is all well and good, so long as we recognize the distinction between what we sought and what, at the end, we have understood. <laughs>